In this video, I'm going to show you a few different approaches for running VS Code on your Apple Vision Pro. Now each of these approaches has its own drawbacks and benefits, and I will say that none of them are exactly perfect, so you're going to have to have a few trade-offs if you're going down this route. It's kind of to be expected when you're doing something so cutting edge, but just keep that in mind throughout. So let's take a look. Now the first approach that I want to cover is the most obvious one, but also the most boring one, which is just using a virtual screen. So for this, we need a Mac uh, laptop, I believe. Um, I think you can also use a desktop, but not 100% sure. Um, and you're just going to create a virtual screen for that. So here I have my uh, laptop that is running VS Code. Then I've created a virtual screen for it, and I can interact with VS Code just like I could if it was on the physical laptop top screen. Uh, this is the least exciting approach because this is just like normal VS Code. So uh, it is actually running on the laptop itself. This is just a virtual screen that we've created. All the normal VS Code stuff works, so I can use my terminal, I get IntelliSense, everything works exactly the same as if it was running on the laptop because that's where it is running. We just have a fancy virtual display here. Uh, when you talk about actually running it on the Vision Pro, though, this is probably not what you expect. Um, the dream is really to be able to just like go to a coffee shop or be able to travel with just your Vision Pro, and this requires that you both bring along your laptop and then the Vision Pro itself. So not the most useful uh, or useful for like traveling because you need both devices but it is the most usable in terms of like functionality. So this is the most complete version of VS Code you can get, also the least exciting. So kind of done talking about that, let's take a look at actually running VS Code directly on the Vision Pro itself. Now, this is a little bit limited because there is no Vision or there is no VS Code app for iOS or for Vision OS or anything like that. So to do this, we're actually gonna use Safari and VS Code.dev. So here I've opened a Safari window over here on Vision OS, and then I've gone to VS Code.dev. And this is a version of VS Code that runs in your browser. Once you actually load this up, you'll see the normal VS Code user interface. Now this version of VS Code is a little bit more limited because it's again, running entirely inside of your browser, but you can do things like open GitHub repositories. And a little later on, I'll actually show how you can connect to remote machines using this as well. So just to get started, I'm gonna go and open a GitHub repository so we have some code to look at. I'm gonna go to the Explorer over here and say open remote repository. And I've already logged into GitHub in this instance, and I've opened a repository previously. If you have not done that, you just say open repository from GitHub, go through the whole login flow, but I'm just gonna open the repository that I previously opened up. Once you open up this, and we'll get an extra permission dialog, which is one of the bugs you'll run into along the way, you can see that we get a pretty uh, familiar looking VS Code version. This is cool, but it's uh, running entirely inside of Safari. So it's basically VS Code that you know from desktop running entirely inside of Safari. Now there are going to be a number of limitations that you'll notice. Um, so for example, because this is running entirely in Safari, there's not gonna be a terminal, you can't do builds or anything like that but you do get some IntelliSense. Some language extensions are going to work, other ones will not. And you can also just go browse around in the code itself um, if you're just wanting to do that. So I can go scroll through this file. I can go and select a the readme, for instance, look through this. So I get a, a somewhat complete version of VS Code running in my browser. It does have limitations, but pretty cool to be able to run this on Vision OS itself in Safari. Now, where you're going to run into the most limitations though, there, there's definitely gonna be some bugs you'll run into because VS Code has not actually been tested on Vision OS. This is all pretty um, cutting edge at the time and hopefully things will get better over time. So just keep that in mind. But the more important thing is that the uh, user input type stuff, so uh, mouse control or keyboard stuff, it is not great out of the box on, the, uh, on Vision OS. So on Vision OS, you're using eye tracking for interacting with things and then you have a virtual keyboard or dictation for um, text input. And that text input especially, like let's say you're wanting to make a code change to a file here, using the virtual keyboard to do that is basically impossible. I, I just, I can't find a good way to actually do this. Dictation doesn't really help. Um, just to demonstrate this, like let's say I was wanting to update line 51 here. I'd kind of start by looking at line 51. You don't see, you see, I don't get any preview of where I'm looking. Then I can try to go and actually edit. See, I'm on line 52 now. Okay, so now I'm on line 51. Now I have to go and actually open up my keyboard. So I'll say show keyboard and then I can go in here and instead of JS, oh, I think I might be on the wrong line. Let's just say, oh uh, yeah. So that's another one of the bugs here. Close that and I'll go in here and say, oh, not A, I want S. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to, to you get the idea. Okay, <laughs> so, so we're back to JavaScript. I was trying to just type it to uh, JS. You get the idea that this is basically impossible to use for serious text editing. So if you're doing like traditional coding, 
anything with messaging, like it is really impossible to use this virtual keyboard, um, especially once you get into like moving around the file and stuff. It is just not a good experience. So at a bare minimum, what you're going to want to do is just put the virtual keyboard somewhere else, hook up a Bluetooth keyboard. So you can use, I believe, pretty much any Bluetooth keyboard, uh, hook it up to the normal Bluetooth menu to your Vision Pro, and then you can connect that and you get a much nicer experience. So here I can actually go in, you can see I've connected things up already. Um, I can just use the arrow keys to move through the file. I can go make the edit that I wanted to previously. So I can change this from JavaScript to JS much more easily. And I can even use keyboard shortcuts. So I can do things like show or hide the um, sidebar here. Let's go over to do like, uh, go to the search view, show and hide the sidebar. Um, go open up the Explorer here if I wanted to. So I can use a lot of my normal keyboard shortcuts for actually moving around the editor. And this just makes things a whole lot nicer. I would say that a virtual keyboard is basically, or a physical keyboard is basically required if you're wanting to use VS Code for anything more than just like glancing at a single file. It's a really miserable experience without it. Even if you're just reading code, I think having a keyboard is really nice. It just makes everything a whole lot better. So definitely try to get a Bluetooth keyboard for, for using it uh, right now. Now, the other limitation you'll run into though, is even after you have the keyboard and let's say you're great at using keyboard navigation for things, there, um, there are going to be some keyboard shortcuts that just don't work. Um, so this is because you're running inside of Safari itself. Some keyboard shortcuts, like let's say creating a new tab or a new editor, normally on Mac, you would press Command N to create that. In this case, it would actually open up a new Safari tab because that um, keyboard shortcut belongs to the browser. And unfortunately, that's not something that VS Code can fix right now. So there are going to be some limitations with um, the types of keyboard shortcuts that can actually work. And some really common ones like Control P to go to file, that actually opens up the print dialog, which not too helpful. Um, so we probably don't want to print out the editor. Um, but th just keep in mind that there are some limitations. You might have to change key bindings if you're using the keyboard here. The other uh, big limitation I want to mention, though, is that uh, eye tracking is also just not the best for working with uh, VS Code. I've actually made this a little bit better by um, making the editor larger, but in general, VS Code's user interface is not super well designed for um, the eye tracking interaction. So there's a lot of little tiny buttons and not all of them have feedback when you go and hover over them uh, with your eye. So if you uh, want, you can actually connect up a magic trackpad this is the only um, mouse type device that I believe can be connected right now. I don't think you can use a normal Bluetooth mouse and connect that to the Vision Pro. That's kind of unfortunate, but in the future, hopefully they'll relax that. If you connect up the Magic Trackpad, you can see that I now get a little cursor and I can actually just start using this pretty much like a mouse and keyboard on my laptop. So uh, I can just go navigate around here. It's just a very familiar experience here on uh, Vision OS. And it's really cool that, again, this is all running inside of Safari directly on Vision OS. It starts to feel very familiar, very much like what I would get if I was running VS Code on the desktop. So Magic Trackpad plus keyboard, pretty good experience. The obvious downside of this is that, well, now if we wanted to go and work remotely somewhere, we've got to bring around both of these devices. And at this point, when we've got oh, three devices we're having to bring around here, keyboard, trackpad, and the Vision Pro, you might question, well, why don't we just bring around the laptop um, and then we get the even nicer version of VS Code that can have the um, integrated terminal and all these other features and we could just create a virtual screen for that. So that is something to consider is that this looks really cool. Like you could be just working with your keyboard and trackpad and then you have your headset, but you might just want to bring the laptop around, especially if you have a tiny laptop because now you're having to carry around quite a few devices. But let's just assume that you do want to do everything directly on Vision OS itself. Um, using the trackpadding and keyboard. It's an okay experience, I would say, overall. A few limitations, but it works better than you'd probably expect. Now, there are a few tips that you can do to make the experience a little bit nicer in general too, no matter what type of device setup you're using. The first one I would recommend is just making the user interface larger. Uh, and for that, we can actually go to the reader view in uh, the browser. So up in the address bar here, we're going to go to the reader options. And you can see I've set mine to 150%, just making everything a lot larger. If I reset this, you can see that everything is a much smaller. Now I could make the screen larger, um, but I find that making the actual uh, size of things a little bit larger here helps quite a bit. You also notice that sometimes when I zoom, it gets these fun white bars. That is one of the bugs I was mentioning uh, with VS Code right now. So I'm not quite sure what those white bars are, uh, but 200% now seems to work for whatever reason. So I would highly recommend especially if you're using the eye tracking for input, definitely make things larger because it makes it a whole lot easier to hit the button that you're looking at. However, even after you make things larger, 
if you're just using the eye tracking, it can still be kind of hard to hit those the smaller buttons and smaller things. So often I would find myself kind of mistyping. There, for that, you can actually turn on some accessibility options that make this a little bit easier. So let's take a look at doing that. So in the Vision OS settings here, so I'll just go to my system settings. I'm gonna go down to accessibility here and then go to physical and motor and go over to interaction. And here I want to go to the pointer control option. And then I'm gonna turn on the first option up here, which is just turning on pointer control. Whoops, let's go back, turn on pointer control. This now creates a little cursor here, that little circle that is telling me where I am currently looking. So that is um, when we turn on that option, we actually can see where we're looking. Now the next option we're going to turn on here is the control option. So instead of using our eyes for tracking, we're actually going to use our index finger for tracking. So we'll go down to control here and we're gonna say index finger. You can also use wrist or head if you want, but I found index finger kind of works best for me. And I'm gonna to choose to use it with my right hand. Whoops. So after turning on this option, you can see after I, when I stick out my right hand, I've also turned on this show depth ray option, which I quite like. Um, I can now use my index finger to actually control the, the cursor here. So we have that cursor um, that we had before, the pointer that we had before. I can now use my index finger on my right hand to actually control where that cursor is on the screen. And then I can use the left hand here to actually pinch to go and make selections. So that's like the tap to select thing. If I go back to VS Code now, I can now start pointing around the screen and it becomes just a whole lot more precise for going and selecting things. Like let's say I wanted to open the file browser. I can just go point at it and I was able to very quickly see where my cursor was, position it and then refine it once I get over there and then just tap with my fingers here and I was able to go and select it. Uh, and I just find it's a whole lot easier to hit like small things like the little X button up here. Um, that is pretty hard to hit with eye tracking. I think the pointer control um, using your index finger, it's a lot more precise. What I hope is that in the future, Apple will give you an option to do both because once you turn on the index finger for pointer control, I don't think there's a way to go back to using your eye tracking. Eye tracking works okay some of the time, but sometimes you do want the more uh, precise index finger tracking or hand tracking. And that's where this can be quite useful. Um, if you are not using the trackpad, I think the trackpad is probably gonna be the better experience overall. But if you're just using a keyboard, I would consider turning on the, these accessibility pointer control options because it is a little bit more useful if you're actually like wanting to go through files here. Um, it's just very, a little bit more precise and it's a, it provides an extra feedback as well to have the little cursor on the screen telling you where you're currently looking. So consider turning those on as well, just if you're only working with a keypad. If you're really wanting the best experience though, also consider setting up the trackpad. I'm just gonna go turn this back to eyes because that is kind of the standard setup. Now, one final really cool thing. So the version of VS Code that we've been looking at here the whole time has been running entirely in Safari. And that's great. It can run obviously on Vision OS, but it means that we don't have things like the terminal. I'm gonna show you how you can now connect your version of VS Code that's running in Safari here over to an actual machine. And this, this could be a machine that's at home. It could be a machine up, that's up in the cloud. It's really entirely up to you. Um, so let's take a look at doing that. Now to start, we actually need to go to the machine that we want to connect to and install some things over there. So I'm gonna go back to my Mac here. Just open this up. Um, and there's, I'm gonna show the UI way of doing this uh, through VS Code itself, but there is a way to do this using the command line if you're doing something up to the cloud. So just connecting to my Mac and creating the virtual display for that here. All right, so this is my Mac uh, with the virtual screen. On my Mac, I'm gonna go into VS Code and go over to the extensions and install the remote tunnels extension. This extension will let me go and connect to this machine remotely from other machines that I'm signed into with the same set of accounts. So I have the remote tunnels extension installed and I'm gonna say, let's go actually go in and uh, reset things. I'm gonna go into the command palette here with uh, command shift P and say remote tunnels, turn on remote tunnel access just to go through this flow again. Now we have two options. We can either say turn on access when VS Code is running or we can install this as a service in the background so that whenever the computer is running, we can connect to it. I think this is the better option overall. So I'm gonna say install as a service. Now we have to choose what account we're going to sign into. I'm just gonna use my GitHub account that I've signed into previously. So I'll select this. It is now enabling uh, tunnel access. And at this point, once it's set up, any other VS Code instance that we sign into with GitHub and have the remote tunnels extension installed with, we'll be able to connect to this machine and we don't actually need VS Code running. So why don't we just go and close the virtual screen here because we don't need that anymore. Okay, so now back to the browser. So back over in Safari on Vision OS. Now we're going to use the, um, we're going to go and connect to our machine. I actually do need to have this machine running. So I need to have it running, but I don't need VS Code running. So I'll just go and open that up. So here inside of VS Code, let me make this a slight bit larger. 
Hopefully that resizes right. Um, I'm going to open up the command palette and let's see if I can get that to work properly. Sometimes it doesn't like doing this. Okay, so I'll go up to the command palette here, I guess, because F1 was not working for some reason. Always love the bugs. And I'm going to say remote tunnels. And I want to say remote tunnels connect to tunnel here. I'm going to say GitHub, which is the account that I signed into on the Mac over here. So I'll say GitHub. And then I want to go in here. And I'm going to select the same machine that I had before. So this is the machine that I previously set up the tunnel on. You can see it gave it a name automatically, but you could also give your machine a custom name when you're setting everything up. So I'll select this. And now this Safari window of VS Code, so the version running in VS Code.dev, that is going and connecting over to the machine that's running on my Mac. And these do not have to be on the same network. These could actually be on completely separate networks. And the machine that actually is hosting the remote tunnels, that could be running in the cloud. That could be like a Raspberry Pi type thing. Like it could be anywhere it, and you could be in a coffee shop and connect to it. So um, see the documentation for how, how to actually set that up. In Safari though, in VS Code.dev, we can now see that we're connected by this little remote indicator down here. We're connected to that machine. And now we just have to open a folder on that machine. So we're going to go to open folder here. Now we're actually browsing files on that machine. And I'll say projects. And I'm just going to open up the VS Code source. So I'm going to open up the source code of VS Code itself, which again, all the files are hosted over on that machine. When we connect to the machine here, not only are the files hosted over there, but also all of the IntelliSense and extensions are going to run over there as well. So we're going to get something that is very similar to our desktop experience, but running entirely inside the browser. Uh, you can see that a pop-up has come up here and it is showing off screen. Um, I don't know what the deal is with that, but I'm going to go and reduce the size of my page here to get it back on screen. Gotta love all the little bugs. Um, as I have said before, VS Code has not really been tested on Vision OS, so love living on the cutting edge here. Now we are actually inside of the VS Code source, uh, like the source code for VS Code itself, that is all hosted on this machine over here, but we're able to browse it in Safari on Vision OS. And uh, if I hover over something, like let's just go into a random thing here. You can see I get my normal IntelliSense. I have my normal set of extensions installed. Um, everything is going to be pretty much just like I would have actually working on a desktop, but it's running entirely, like the UI side of things is running entirely inside of Vision OS. I can even go and open up the terminal. So I could go in here. Uh, you can see I could run normal terminal commands like ls or uh, uname to actually confirm that I'm on my Mac. So remote it into my Mac here. I just have a, a, a very similar experience to what I'd get if I had a virtual screen for my Mac, but entirely inside of Safari through VS Code.dev. So that is the power of remote tunnels, especially if you have remote tunnels plus a keyboard and a trackpad, you get something that is almost identical to um, your desktop-based experience with VS Code. There are some key limitations and key differences to be aware of, but it, it gets very close and you can actually create a, a very similar experience just on Vision OS. If you do not want to have to maintain your own remote tunnel machine, there are services that can provide this. So you could use like GitHub Codespaces or some similar service to get a VM up in the cloud. So those are always options as well. Hopefully though, this gives you an idea of what is possible. Um, as you've seen, there's uh, a lot of little limitations and um, things you have to work around along the way and definitely gonna be some bugs because this is a pretty new experience. Over time, if, if this is something that we see a lot of developers doing, I'm sure the VS Code team is going to make this better. Um, but it is cool that this works at all and it's kind of a fun way to go and program. Um, actually working entirely inside Vision OS uh, just with Safari here and VS Code.dev. It's, it's more usable than you think it should be, but there are definitely still some limitations. Now, if you have any other tips or ideas or thoughts that people might find helpful about using VS Code on Vision OS, be sure to post those in the comments. I'm sure that I've overlooked some things. This is sort of just my first exploration of using VS Code on Vision OS and discovering what's possible. As I've said, it's pleasantly surprising what you can do today, but there are going to be a lot of limitations. I bet things are going to get better over time, but it's pretty cool to be living on the cutting edge and seeing what you can do even today. Thanks for watching and happy coding.